I went swiftly to Golden Square, performing my usual full circuit of its railings before turning into the entrance behind the church wall which would lead me to Marlow. By comparison with all the other thoroughfares, Golden Square always seemed a lost and abandoned place to me, calmer, darker and considerably quieter than its surroundings, a place perpetually overcast either by cloud or by the circling shadows of its buildings, a place in which it was forever late afternoon, forever autumn and seldom summer, always later rather than earlier in the day, whatever time one entered it. The church bell tolled the hour, the hour of my appointment with Marlowe. Waiting a moment for the note of my final rap on his door to fade completely, I then moved to a second door, ten or twelve feet distant. Here again I composed myself, counted silently to twenty, and then gave the same six clear raps. This time I heard the distorted murmur of voices within. Again I waited. A man who did not know of this arrangement, Marlowe said, would be unable to resist knocking again perhaps calling out, uncertain of what he might have imagined he'd heard beyond this second door. All a man who understood and followed this arrangement needed was patience. A further full minute passed. The whispering voices no longer sounded, and again all I could hear was the sound of my own breathing. It had long since occurred to me that entering that silent building was like entering an echo chamber, regardless of its constricted, twisting spaces. After a further minute, a small panel slid open and an eye looked out at me. This panel was equally swiftly slid shut again and a bolt immediately drawn. This was followed by a second and then a third. And an instant later, the door was pulled wide open and the dark corridor behind me was bathed in light. And along with this light, yellow merging to orange and red across the dull canvas of the opposite wall that also spilled from the room both warmth and noise, the latter a low cacophony of voices and laughter and music. And in the doorway, framed by all this unexpected change, was Marlowe himself, a dark and sudden outline against the blossoming light my eyes adjusted quickly to this glare, but even before he spoke to me, I knew that the figure in the doorway was Marlowe. I knew it was Marlowe before he spoke my name or held out his hand to me, before he drew me to him and embraced me, and then, as he held me at arm's length and grinned at me. Your heart, he said to me, I can feel the beating of your heart.